here. So um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, I'm Christopher Spaulding. Uh, I'm the co-chair of uh, the Community Council. Um, and welcome to the uh, uh, Folio Project Open Community Meeting. Uh, I'm part of the community. Uh, this is my second year on the Community Council, first year as a, uh, a co-chair. Um, so let's kick things off. Go. So um, I was reflecting last night, going back to 2016, where we started as a project um, having quick reviews, like a year in review with it. And there was a handful of us that would uh, do these year in reviews. Um, but it was a year in review, and a lot of it was still, especially back then, uh, it was still very um, uh, uh, fluffy and, and hand-waving. What's really excited about these community meetings are that we're not only talking about recent events, but we're also talking about things we're up to presently and things that are coming quickly. Um, so it's all, all very exciting. So uh, the community meeting is really focused on co-chair updates from the various councils, as well as um, an update from our treasurer. And then at the end, giving some time for uh, Q&A from the community or anyone that has any type of, of questions or follow-up or seeking information. Um, so we'll start out with uh, uh, community council updates. Then we'll move to um, the accounting genius of Kat Berry for the folio treasurer update. Uh, moving on to the technical masterminds of Craig McNally and Jen Colt for the tech council updates. Um, also moving into the planning prime movers of the product council updates of Caitlin Stewart and Alexis Mannheim, and then again, open uh, open questions. Uh, I just wanted to remind people that these updates are on the uh, Folio Wiki, as well as uh, when the next update will, will happen. Um, the updates are you know, slides, recordings, and we'll update this later on today. Uh, we've moved to a twice per year cadence just because the amount of things that are being delivered uh, and the uh, the richness of the feature set of Folio, as well as things that are happening within the Folio community and the conversations that are happening. So, uh, and and a thing to point out is that feedback is always welcome on um, uh, what is being delivered in these meetings, uh, how we're delivering it, the platform, et cetera please let us know if there's more that you'd like to, to hear or if things that we're not hitting upon. Uh, a quick review and look forward. Uh, WolfCon uh, at the University of London uh, Senate House this past month was fantastic. It, uh, each year, WolfCon seems to get to be more and more organized. We know what we're doing there. The, uh, the depth of the conversations or presentations, uh, the granularity, it's, 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 it's fantastic. Um, it was great to hear also from the Open Library Foundation and that the, uh, the other projects like ReShare, LDP, um, COHA that are joining, as well as uh, new organizations uh, here that are in the pipeline um, that will be joining these tracks in the future at WolfCon events. Um, Excellent folio track this year. Uh, it was it really WolfCon was um, uh, packed full of great information, presentation slides as well as uh, presentations and slides um, can be found uh, um, on SCAD. Uh, we're, the planning group is already running at WolfCon uh, 2025. It is going to be in Kansas City, and we have. Uh, um, uh, bookmarked September 2025. Um, I believe that there are site visits happening at this time uh, and more details will be coming shortly. Uh, very exciting even that uh, I think uh, Jesse Kennecke from Cornell as well as the planning group have uh, really hit their groove and are already talking to uh, um, organizations for 2026. Um, All right. Oh, 
Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'll take over. Simeon Warner, the other co-chair of the Community Council, with some Community Council updates. Next slide, please, Christopher. So one of the key activities of the Community Council is around managing community health and the elections process. Uh, so we had elections in uh, late spring, early summer, over 1,300 votes cast for the three council elections. And we seated five new community council members, uh, Stephen Pampel, Joanna Redding, Joseph Grelny, Rachel Kotarski and Sean Nicholson um, this summer, which is a you know good process of, of change and renewal and get to see some new voices. One of the things we thought about as a result of the election process this year is that not all of the council elections were contested. And you know, while we don't wish to create sort of artificial races, it would be good to have a little more um candidacy. Um, so we're going to work to start the election process earlier this year. And uh, Joe Grabelny from the Community Council agreed to lead a nomination committee and will be seeking membership from the two other councils to get this process going uh, sooner than it was last year and hopefully get uh, a larger number of people to stand. Um, and I was co-chair of Community Council with Mike Garrell last year. Um, and Christopher has taken over as the other, other co-chair. Next slide, please. So a few highlights of things that uh, Community Council's been involved with uh, since the last update about six months ago. Um, there was the evaluation process for new modules that went through all three councils. Uh, the other councils doing the work of actually creating it, um, but it was reviewed by CC. Um, We've had quite a lot of discussion in the Community Council about the notion of folio membership, what makes it attractive, what makes it appealing. Um, we should note that the membership dues are a key to the idea of community sustainability. Um, if we did not have members paying dues, then there would be no central funding with which the community with the three councils could decide to do things. We'd be at entirely at the mercy of particular actors in the community who chose to do things with their, their own funding. Um, we had earlier had in, in the governance model the notion of a folio advisory group, which was, I think, designed as a group of members where membership of the group was seen as a member benefit and sort of gave the impression that being part of this group gave one a sort of stronger voice, a sort of pay to play. And we concluded that that vehicle wasn't really very useful and the community council agreed to remove it from the government's model. Now, having said that, um, we still you know, need to work harder to understand the values and be benefits of membership. And to that end, we started this meeting series about folio membership. So these meetings are not limited to folio membership, but the topic is membership. So of course it's of greatest interest to those who either are already members or are interested in becoming members. So we're trying to sort of build a sense of community around that. We had a Zoom meeting on June 10th. We had a, an in-person meeting at WolfCon and then a social gathering afterwards, all of which I think were quite useful. I think we have work to do um, around communicating the purpose and setting good discussions for these meetings, but we definitely intend to, to keep working at, at this as part of our activities for this year. Next slide, please. In the spring, we created a developer advocate role, um, a centrally funded part-time position um, which was filled by uh, Patrick Pace uh, and initially had a contract through from mid-April through mid-October. Um, while we feel that it's a little early to tell quite how effective the good work that Patrick has been doing is in encouraging uh, additional development contributions to Folio, 
we had discussions uh, within CC and agreed to support the role through the end of this fiscal year. Um, currently, uh, we're working to review the details of the role based on feedback from Patrick, the person who's been in it, uh, and will be ending through his own choice uh, with the mid-October current contract. Um, and feedback from the, the councils, but we, we believe the role is useful and we will be recruiting um, to fill that again. Um, the cost of our Amazon Web Services shared infrastructure has been uh, an issue of late. Um, there is a cost review group that includes the Folio QA coordinator plus representatives from the Community Council and Product Council. Um, we have noted that there were significantly increased cost projections uh, as a result of additional testing work and the support for Eureka and pre-Eureka environments. Now, these are all things that we as a community wish to do, but we have to realize that the community council has control of only so much money that comes from membership dues. Um, as an interim measure, the community council implemented a cap on monthly expenditure which we have kept within for the last two months but there's still discussion of what a sustainable long-term solution will be for this um, and finally we've just started a discussion at the last uh, community council meeting of doing a review and updating of the folio governance model i think at minimum uh, the governance model document needs some change in description because it really talks about starting up and what the first few lo years look like. And we're now entering, uh, I guess we're in the fourth year since its implementation. Um, so there's some clarification that's needed, but I think we will also start having some discussions and we'll be welcoming input from the other councils on whether to consider more substantive changes. Next slide, please. So just a reminder, the community council meetings, as with most folio meetings, are open to anyone who cares to join them. They're on the second and fourth Mondays at 10 a.m. US Eastern time. Um, and there's a hashtag folio hyphen community hyphen council uh, Slack channel or, or discussion of community council items or messages from community council. Next slide, please. So I will quickly put on my uh, pretending to be Cat Berry treasurer hat. Uh, she's unfortunately unable to join us today, but she offers this um, short update on the treasury. Um, starting with our fiscal year 25, which starts in, in July, we have achieved 66%, two thirds of the funding uh, for membership so far, which is great at this time of year. Uh, and she'll be sending renewal reminders out very shortly. Uh, we welcome uh, new members. I always pronounce Lin Choping incorrectly, I feel, but uh, Chalmers is easier for me. We have continued to sustain um, a fully funded reserve account, which I, th oh, I'm going to get it wrong exactly how many months. I think it was a, approximately half a year's budget, if I remember correctly. Um, and we have funds sufficient to cover regular expensive and the temporary positions of the project as currently projected, although we're still working out exactly uh, the details of the budget with regard to our AWS shared infrastructure. And Kat offers a reminder that the best thing we can do to help our finances is recruit new members. So. If you have friends in institutions that have implemented or are implementing Folio that are not yet members, please encourage them to be part of the community. I think that is my, the end of my part. Thanks, Simeon. So I'll take over and, and provide the technical council update. Next slide, please. So well, first we'll just go through a list of, at a high level, what we've done uh, in, in 2024. Um, and then on the next slide, we'll get into some of our future plans. So, so far, um, the developer advocate, Patrick Pace, has already been mentioned. Um, the technical council worked closely with him on a couple different things, including 
documentation updates and, and so forth. And so um, his term is completed and um, but he left us in a good spot for for whoever's next to uh, to pick things up where he left off. So that's good. Um, Eureka related RFCs. And I don't know if, if the folks uh, in this meeting are familiar with, with what Eureka is, but it's basically um, like a next generation platform or, or core of folio. Um, and so there's there's been one RFC that's been approved that was for the application formalization aspect of this. Um, and then the, the tech council decided to take a slightly different approach with the remaining um, content and basically just have one big RFC that covers um, covers all of Eureka because it was just going to take too long to go through individual aspects of it um, with an RFC for each. So that um, that just made it through preliminary review where we we looked at sort of the motivation, the scope, um, and, and the summary statements and the timing and so forth to make sure that things they were all aligned on expectations and then um, the RFC is being written as we speak. Um, officially supported technologies maintenance. So the technical council maintains this list of quote unquote officially supported technologies. And, and there are a couple of different reasons for doing this, um, but basically it requires some, some maintenance, some upkeep. Um, and we have various milestones at, um, throughout the release cycles to keep these things up to date. Um, and so we've been continuing to do that. Um, TCR refers to new module evaluations. Um, so whenever a new module is on the scene and, and wants to be included into a, uh, a flower release, um, a submission is made to the technical council to, um, to look at some of the technical details, the test code coverage, uh, whether or not it's using technologies on that officially supported list. Um, and a bunch of other things, right? And so nine modules made it through this process in this this year, which is is noteworthy. I mean, nine, that's not insignificant, right? Um, RFC process improvements. So yeah, um, after after each of our RFCs, we have um, a retrospective to see how how can the process be improved. And so um, we've we've done that after the last RFC, this application formalization one as well as there was one about the Go language as well. Um, and some of the improvements, just to just to hit on some quick things are instead of putting the RFCs in GitHub um, and writing them in Markdown, we're using, uh, we're transitioning or piloting the use of, of the wiki instead, which is maybe a little bit easier or user-friendly. Um, I think that's it. Next. So what's coming up for us? Um, we're continuing uh, the topic of how to make architectural decisions and what process works best. So architectural decisions, there's, you know, come in all different shapes and sizes. There isn't a single process which is always going to be applicable for them. So um, this overlaps significantly with the RFC process, obviously. Um, but the TC is is looking at this and and maybe not everything warrants an RFC, right? Because uh, it's, it's kind of a heavy process compared to what some of the decisions that need to be made. Um, continuing engagement on Eureka changes. Um, we have a working group that's a tri-council working group. The TC is, is playing uh, a part in that. Um, and I already mentioned the Eureka RFCs. Uh, building on developer documentation work by Patrick. So basically picking up where he left off. Um, hopefully we can find someone to fill that developer advocate role and, and sort of resume that work. Um, and we invite developers and others to bring technical issues and topics to our attention. So very similar to what um, Simeon mentioned, uh, the TC meetings are always open. Um, these details aren't here on, on the slide, but uh, we meet every Monday um, at 11 o'clock Eastern. Um, and if you just join the Tech Council's Tech Council's channel in Slack, there's um, a meeting link is, is posted there each week, um, along with a link to uh, agenda and notes. The Monday meetings are are more for checking in on progress of certain things, looking at um, those those tech evaluation submissions and so forth. And then we also meet oftentimes on on Wednesdays for a more in depth discussion about a dedicated topic. Um, and so the topic changes from week to week, and sometimes there's nothing to discuss, and so we just skip that meeting. Um, again, that's at eleven o'clock Eastern time. Um, and same thing, uh, a link to the notes is, is posted each Wednesday. I think that's it. Next. 
Yep, and so I'll hand it over to the PC update. Thanks very much. Um, so first, I wanted to say we have one, two, three, four new members that were elected to the PC this year. Um, Jeremy Huff from Texas A&M, who used to be on the Tech Council. Uh, Martin Schultz from FAU University Library. Lisa McColl from Lehigh. And Caitlin Stewart from the Library of Congress, who is our new co-chair in the Product Council. I also wanted to give a shout out to Kristen Martin, who had been co-chair for three years, who um, definitely paid her dues and cycled off this year, although she's still on the PC. But I wanted to say thank you for to Kristen for, for serving so <laughs> uh, diligent, diligently for so many years. Um, so first, I wanted to talk about what, um, what we've been doing, what's been completed, and what's in progress in the Product Council. Um, we set some goals last year at WolfCon um, and formed some groups to um, to work on those goals. One of them was meeting hygiene and efficiency. That group has completed is complete. Um, we adjusted the length of our meetings. We're tracking our decisions and action items better. We tried a couple of Asia Pacific friendly time zone meetings, which I think we had a little bit of mixed um, results there. And I think we might need to tweak that process a little bit, but it was still really great to, to hear from those folks. Um, the structuring SIG reports um, process is also complete. We changed to a written SIG convener report and um, as opposed to um, the verbal reports that began to feel a little bit like book reports, um, even though they were informational. Um, we thought the meetings could be used a little bit more effectively, so they've become more topical meetings, which I think have been really great. Um, we've an example here I put down was that we have now have a forum. We had a we had a meeting and we discussed. Um, uh, we had um, <clears throat> excuse me, a meeting to discuss the changes from hot fixes to critical service patches, the fact that we have fewer annual flower releases now, and the role of the release management stakeholders group. It was really a good conversation. Um, and then the application and platform formalization um, group, we talked about it in the PC, there was further discussion, decided it needed to be a tri-council group, and that group is currently working um, with members of all three councils. Next slide, please. Um, okay, in addition, we officially adopted the evaluation process for new folio functionality, which Simeon mentioned. Um, there was a pilot, we've made some adjustments. We're still gonna be making some adjustments, but um, it's it's basically the process is in place. Um, we need to hear from POs and dev teams early and often. And that's something that we need to be a bit more proactive about on the PC. We've decided that um, folks get so busy, they kind of sometimes maybe forget to come to us earlier rather than later. And so we want to try to set up a process so that we're, const we're constantly sort of reminding folks and getting, getting ourselves inserted into the process earlier. Um, we have better coordination now with the Tech Council's review process, which is great. Um, and in the past, I guess since April, in the past six months or so, we've reviewed um, four, new, um, four new apps and endorsed them. There's also a better sample data subgroup currently in process. Um, this began as a discussion about issues of the data that was in the Folio snapshot. Um, that group has been working since June. Um, the goal is to improve the sample data in the snapshot environments, but it's also grown into um, um, the hope that we will be able to help um, facilitate refreshing data for the bug fest environment as well. The data in those environments is very old. It's not as kind of expansive as it needs to be. Um, and we're gonna try to get <clears throat> data from more places um, and updated data in order to get better testing environments ready for everybody, pick up bugs faster, sooner, et cetera. Next slide, please. So the prioritization of roadmap working group um, is wrapping up after two years of work. Um, the new roadmap um, is a reflection of the work that is being done by the folks who are actually doing the work. <laughs> so EBSCO, Index Data, uh, Knowledge Integration, institutional teams that are working with vendors um, and institutional teams on their own. Um, gathering that data 
from all of those specific roadmaps from those organizations. Um, and then also using existing JIRA information to compile a, um, a roadmap from the work in progress. Um, the cone of uncertainty that you see here is just to acknowledge that this is, none of this is set in stone. Um, there's there's always slippage, it happens. But just to know that this these are the goals, this is the 18 month plan and that you can look on the dashboards and all the other places to be able to see um, how things are progressing and whether the um, functionality you're looking for is coming out in an upcoming release. The existing labels that are already in JIRA are being used, um, hopefully making it easier for the POs to be able to um, tag things or the, the dashboards to pick up what the POs are tagging so that folks can see the visualizations um, on the JIRA dashboards. And I put a link in there to the metadata management roadmap, which is really helpful. If you go to the wiki, you can see all of these things, click on all the various um, functional areas and see what's in progress. Uh, next slide, please. Prioritization. So this is something um, we've made a lot of progress this year. There's the group that was working on this. Basically, um, the acquisition SIG had a process that we're going to roll out to more uh, SIGs. So the idea that the prioritization process, which used to be when Folio was a smaller organ, um, a smaller group of libraries, there were spreadsheets and rankings and things like that, and that was not sustainable. So this new process is basically um, using, again, existing JIRA functionality to vote on particular um, features. And so the acquisition SIG was already doing this. They kind of fleshed it out, have created some documentation, and the plan is to roll this out to additional SIGs um, in the coming months. The, um, the, SIG, the SIG conveners meetings that the topical meetings that I mentioned earlier, we're going to have a meeting in November to roll this out to the other SIGs, um, explain how it's gonna work. Hopefully they'll be able to pick it up. Um, we're hoping it's not too much work. We don't wanna add a ton of um, added time to anybody's, um, anybody's uh, having to do this. We don't want anybody to have to spend a ton of time doing this. Um, hopefully it will be pretty straightforward easy to adopt. And again, if it needs tweaking or whatever, you know, that that's great. Um, so basically folks can do a thumbs up if there's a particular feature that their institution um, is really interested in. And then the idea is that when developers or POs see that a particular feature has a lot of interest, they can then follow up on that. Next slide, please. Hey, okay, so yes, I'm going to turn it over okay. to Caitlin, uh, our new co-chair, who has been instrumental in helping us figure out how to set our goals for the coming year. Oh, thanks, Alexis. Um, I think that in some ways, prioritization is going to be kind of a uniting theme this year. So Alexis led a great goal-setting workshop at WolfCon. Uh, we had excellent participation from people who are there, people who are joining remotely, some of whom got up at four in the morning to do so. And we came out of that workshop with some really strong ideas for this year. Uh, in fact, we have so many strong ideas that we're going to have to focus on a few and likely reserve a couple of these for next year. So we're still working on that prioritization, but we wanted to go ahead and share these with you all to let you know kind of what's on our radar. And um, I'm kind of curious if people have you know thoughts or questions on these too. So uh, number one, I wanted to talk about, and these are not ranked by priority. Um, is uh, updating the new functionality review process. Um, this is something that's come up a few times, and in a way, it's a natural follow-on to a lot of the work that Alexis described earlier that we're already doing. So currently, of course, the PC review happens typically after development is complete, and we're finding that um, often the PC review is coming too late to make changes. Uh, so what we're talking about doing is maybe finding a way we could shift that review earlier in the development process, uh, ideally at the point of ideation, so that there's a more of an opportunity for the PC to impact that work. Um, the next two here kind of go together, um, soliciting and analyzing community priorities and uh, communicating those back out. 
Um, in a way, it goes hand in hand with the prioritization process that Alexis was just talking to us about. But uh, what we're talking about are ways that PC could potentially have a role in soliciting and documenting community development priorities. Um, Alexis also talked about the roadmap and how it's reflective of work going on right now. Um, this is kind of a complement to that, in addition to just documenting the work that is happening or is planned. Um, this is uh, an attempt to document the work that needs to happen and what our priorities are as a community and share that back out so that potentially we could start to coordinate on how we might meet some of those needs. And this goes really nicely with the next one. Um, there was a really, really engaged conversation around uh, revitalizing community development and how the PC could potentially support that. Um, there's some really great minds working on this and I think I'm really uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. Uh, next we have two that kind of go back to our, our essential role of product management. Um, obviously app formalization is coming <laughs> and there are some interesting conversations going on about how the PC might contribute to and support that process. Additionally, there was some really interesting uh, feedback about uh, standard standardization of uh, kind of cross-platform functionality. Um, in particular, people raised search and how search kind of varies from app to app. This is, of course, something that is kind of endemic to community-led development projects like ours, where you have distributed development, a bunch of different people doing it at the same time. I think the question is whether the PC might have a role in providing some guidelines to encourage some more uniformity over time. And the last goal here, I think, I kind of think of as a supporting goal that's related to everything we've discussed so far, uh, but just generally putting a little bit more focus on ways that we can really um, support people who are interested in taking a bigger role in the community and help develop them as potential uh, community leaders, maybe connecting them to opportunities to act as things like SIG con conveners or eventually be a candidate to uh, sit on one of the camp councils, um, just ways we can kind of develop that long term. So obviously this is a lot and whatever we choose to pursue would happen in addition to all of the work that Alexis just described. So we're going to have to really focus on some top priorities and put the rest of these on the back burner. Um, but yeah, if you have any thoughts or questions on any of this, please feel free to reach out to me and Alexis on Slack um, and we'll keep you updated as this goal setting process uh, moves along. Thanks very much. Next slide, please. This is just to wrap up to let everybody know how to find us, um, read about us, and um, share your thoughts. Um, please come to our meetings. Please uh, join our Slack channel. And um, take a look at what we're working on. That's it. Thanks, everybody. I guess this is question time. Yeah, so um, the floor is open for uh, questions from anyone. Um, feel free to unmute and speak or type a question into chat as whatever suits you best. <laughs> 